much like the product, so have its critics become predictable. Now, go ahead, read almost any review of this particular and yet remarkably unparticular game. They're almost all dictated by the same narrative. Someone telling you this is a game that's not captivating, but had them utterly captivated. And you know, the interesting thing is that they kind of have a point. This is a game that brings nothing to the table from a gameplay perspective, but sets its crosshairs on the hope, uh, or depending on who you are, the reality, that you'll care enough about its story to overlook the fact that you're doing something you've done a hundred times before. In fact, that's the most interesting thing about this game, that it's a symptom of a much larger problem in gaming. They're still alive. Take care of them. One. Released over the summer to HD consoles and PC, Spec Ops The Line is about the 347th cover and fire shooter since Resident Evil 4 planted the seed and Gears of War fertilized the shit out of it. And after you kill your 347th enemy for reasons I'm told are emotionally impactful on 347 different levels, you'll have a choice to make. Are there 347 reasons to love Spec Ops? Or did you prefer its 347 other incarnations? So if you've played any of the shooters that have dominated the industry for nearly a decade, you'll be able to jump into Spec Ops without missing a beat. Using the Marcus Phoenix model, he plays an American soldier sent to Dubai for what he thought was a rescue mission. And then, you know, cover, shoot, cover, shoot, morality, M. Night Shyamalan, cover and shoot. And I'm not making this up. There's some strategy here and there, but it's just for the sake of having it. The game looks technically impressive, but its reliance on realism takes away some of the power. Now, there's just nothing here that qualifies as new or interesting. I, mean, I wish there were. That's why I play games, for the gameplay experiences. But maybe I'm different, and therein lies the problem. The issue for which Spec Ops is merely a symptom. Now, some will say, well, games have changed, but what changed is what the hardcore expects from them. And that's a problem because their expectations aren't necessarily in line with those of average consumers. And unfortunately, we have an industry catering to the prior, to the person so immersed in the product, they don't care that they're playing the same thing over and over. Not as long as it's given some grandiose new coat of paint. In the case of Spec Ops, it's in the form of a gripping story slapped onto the same vehicle we've been driving since 2005. Does that make it bad? No, not necessarily, but it certainly doesn't make it great. <laughs>